Hey there everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at five 2021 model year hardtails under $1,500 that don't suck. All of these bikes will have between 120 and 150 millimeters of travel. And just like all of my other lists, they will all have a one by drivetrain, through axles, front and rear, and hydraulic disc brakes. Sorry Trek fanboys, the Roscoe still doesn't have a boost through axle in the rear, therefore it will not be on this list. And I just saved you the trouble of asking about it in the comments. I made a similar video back in May of five 2020 model hardtails under $1200, but none of those bikes will be on this list today. I would still recommend any of those bikes for the 2021 model year, but I wanted to present five different models today to give you even more to consider. Why was the last budget $1,200 and now it's $1,500? None of the bikes under $1,200 came with a dropper post, but all five of these bikes will come with a dropper post. The five bikes that are featured today are also brands that can be found in a bike shop. While finding a bike in stock is still incredibly difficult, you should have an easier time getting a bike through a local bike shop rather than competing with the entire internet when a direct-to-consumer bike pops up. Let's go ahead and go down the list, and we'll start with the most expensive and work our way down to the least expensive, with a bonus sixth bike at the end that you don't want to miss. The Kona Hanzo. Coming in at $1,499, this aluminum hardtail has 120 millimeters of travel from a RockShox Recon RL, and uses the newest Shimano Dior 11-speed drivetrain. The cassette is an 11 to 51 tooth climbing machine paired to a 30 tooth front chain ring. Brakes are the Shimano MT410 two piston hydraulic brakes with a 180 millimeter rotor up front and a 160 millimeter rotor in the back. It offers a Trans X dropper post with 30 millimeters of adjustable travel in five millimeter increments. The Hanzo is a 29 inch only bike rolling on a Maxxis Minion DHF 2.5 inch up front with a Maxxis Dissector 2.3 inch out back. While this bike does not have the most radical geometry, it has been updated from the 2020 model year. Head tube angle has been slackened out to 67 degrees, although that is still the steepest head tube angle on this list. But they also made the seat tube angle steeper and it is now a 76 degree seat tube angle. It does offer very short chain stays at 420 millimeters, which would allow this bike to be a bit more playful for manuals, wheelies, and stuff like that. Pink Bike did review this bike last year and called it an oversized dirt jumper, so if your riding style is a little bit more playful, this may be the bike for you. The Norco Torrent A2, just $50 cheaper than the Hanzo at $1,449, is the all new Norco Torrent A2. What was once an aluminum hardtail went to a steel only option in 2020, but they now have this aluminum version as well as a steel option for 2021. This 29 inch only hardtail has 150 millimeters of travel from an SR Suntour Xeron 35 coil fork. I debated whether or not to put this bike on this list because I honestly don't know much about this fork. And I also couldn't really find a ton of resources or reviews on it. It does offer 35 millimeter stanchions, so this is a pretty burly coil fork. Interesting fork choice aside, the rest of this bike is pretty awesome. It has the same 11 speed drivetrain as the Hanzo, but uses Tektro four piston hydraulic brakes with 180 millimeter rotor, front and rear. The Norco also uses a Trans X dropper post, but from my research it does not have the travel adjustment that the Hanzo offers. The size small frame gets a 130 millimeter dropper post, while the medium through extra large frames get a 150 millimeter dropper post. In this price range, you'll typically get house branded rims, but the Torrent actually uses Stan's flow rims, rolling on Schwalbe Hans Dampf 2.35 inch tires, front and rear. Now where this bike really gets interesting is its geometry. This is the slackest head angle on the list at 64 degrees. It does have a nice and steep 76 degree seat tube angle to help pedal this thing uphill. This bike does look like a really good time uphill and downhill, but probably more so downhill. There is a higher spec model for $1,800 and that does come with a RockShox 35 air fork if you're not so sure about that Suntour coil fork. Norco also makes the Fluid Hardtail for $1,400 which is another great bike that's probably better suited for this list, but I think the Torrent is too sick not to put on this list. The Marin San Quentin 2. 
This hardtail is $1,359 and is a 27.5 inch only bike, proving that 650B isn't quite dead yet, which is a good thing. I don't want to see 27.5 go away. 130 millimeters of travel from the RockShox Recon RL and 11 speed Dior drivetrain. This bike uses a Sunrace cassette, but it still has the 11 to 51 tooth range and it's paired to a 32 tooth chain ring. Stopping power is from Shimano MT201 hydraulic brakes with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. The size small frame comes with a 125 millimeter travel dropper post and the medium through extra large frames receive a 150 millimeter travel dropper post. Rolling on Marin branded rims are 27.5 by 2.6 inch V-tire flow snaps. Geometry is fairly aggressive and I love that they designed this hardtail with cues from their dirt jumper, the Alcatraz. It has a 65 degree head tube angle with a 75 degree seat tube angle. Pay close attention to the sizing figures on this bike if you end up going with it. I'm six foot tall and I ride a size large in pretty much every bike I've ever looked at. But based on the numbers of the San Quentin, I would actually probably feel more comfortable on an extra large frame. This bike looks so fun to me and in my opinion, it looks ready for anything you could possibly throw at it. The Specialized Fuse 27.5. Coming in at $1,350, this bike will save you $9 over the Marin. But looking at it, it's a pretty similar bike. Here they are back to back. The Specialized even comes in a blue color like the Marin. But unlike the Marin, the Specialized does offer a second color option and it is black. This bike is also 130 millimeters of travel, but it uses the RockShox Judy Silver Fork. 11 speed Dior drivetrain with that 11 to 51 tooth cassette and a 30 tooth chain ring. You also get the Shimano MT200 brakes with 180 millimeter rotor up front and 160 millimeter out back. This bike also has the Trans X dropper post with the extra small and small frames get a 100 millimeter travel post while the medium through the extra large frame only get a 120 millimeter travel post. This bike does have some fairly wide 38 millimeter internal width rims Rolling on Specialized's own 27.5 by 2.8 inch Butcher up front and the Slaughter out back. This particular model is a 27.5 inch only, but they do offer the Fuse in two other versions that are 29 inch only, but the price does increase to $1,800 for the Comp model and $2,450 for the Expert model. So if you want this bike in a 29 inch version, you're gonna have to pay a little bit extra. The geometry isn't as radical as the last two bikes, but it's still relatively close with a 66 degree head tube angle and a 74 degree seat tube angle. I do like the specialized fuse platform, but I would prefer to see the RockShox Recon fork over the Judy on this bike. Also for the larger size frames, I would prefer to see a longer travel dropper post. It's still a really nice bike despite those things, and I included it on this list because Specialized probably has a larger dealer network than any of these other bike brands. So depending where you live, it may be more difficult for you to get a Norco or a Kona and a lot easier to get a Specialized. The Giant Fathom 2. Coming in at $1,300 is the all new Giant Fathom 2. I'm actually really excited by Giant's 2021 model lineup as it looks like they're making giant leaps forward. <laughs> I seriously wrote that joke in there. This bike is no exception and it is a really competitive offering. Offered in both a 29 inch or 27.5 inch version, each with two color options. You have concrete and black with rosewood for the 27.5 inch version, or trekking green and black with blue ash for the 29 inch. Both sizes feature 130 millimeters of travel from Giant's in-house fork, the Crest 34 RCL. These bikes offer the Shimano Dior 12-speed drivetrain with a 10 to 51 cassette paired to a 30-tooth front chainring. That's the only bike on this list with a 12-speed drivetrain. Brakes are Tektro two-piston hydraulics with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. Both bikes use the giant contact switch dropper post with 125 millimeter post for small, 150 for medium, and a 170 millimeter travel post for large and extra large frames. That is a really nice feature. 
Rims are giant branded with a 30 millimeter internal width, and the only difference spec-wise between the 27.5 and the 29 inch version are the tires. The 27.5 inch gets Maxxis Ardent Race 2.6 inch wide front and rear, while the 29 inch version gets a Maxxis Minion DHF 2.5 inch in the front and a Maxxis Aggressor 2.5 inch out back. Kind of an interesting choice to see the faster rolling tires on the 27.5 inch bike, but I don't completely hate this idea. Geometry is similar with the other bikes and pretty great with a 66 degree head tube angle and a 75 degree seat tube angle. The biggest criticism I have for this bike is the use of a press fit bottom bracket rather than a threaded, but that really is just a minor gripe. I'm honestly most impressed with this bike on the list, and it just so happens to be the most affordable. And those are my top 5 picks for 2021 hardtails that you can pick up for under $1500 from a local bike shop. Like I said at the beginning, I do have one bonus bike from a direct to consumer brand, and that is the all new Canyon Stoic. I'm listing this one more for European viewers, and let me explain that really quick. Overseas, Canyon offers the entry-level Stoic 2, the mid-range Stoic 3, and the top-end Stoic 4. For this list to be competitive, I would recommend the mid-range Stoic 3. Here in the United States, we only receive the entry-level Stoic, renamed the Stoic 3, and the top-end Stoic 4. I absolutely adore the white paint job on the entry-level model, but spec-wise, I like the mid-range Stoic 3, offered everywhere else but the United States. The top-end Stoic 4 is $1,800 here in the United States, so that exceeds our budget for this video, but that is also a very nice bike. I'm not going to go into excessive detail about the Stoic 3 spec build, because it's just a bonus bike that I felt it was an injustice if I did not mention it, because I'm really excited to see a new hardtail from Canyon. Let me know down in the comments which bikes you are most excited for or if there are any that I missed that I should definitely check out. These are the five best ones, in my opinion, that I could find for that budget, but feel free to let me know if there's one I missed. If you do have any questions, I will do my best to respond to them. I try to answer all of them, but with these list videos I get so many comments, sometimes I do miss them. So I apologize if I don't respond to you or haven't in the past. I try to do my best here to keep up with them. I'm really stoked on all five of these entries, and I love seeing how far budget bikes have come in the last 10 years. I put budget in quotes because I, I know $1,500 is still a lot of money. I've said this in a few videos, I bought an $1,100 bike in 2012 and it was not nearly as good as any of the bikes I just talked about today. So use this video as a research tool and be ready to make that purchase once these bikes come in stock because bikes are still unbelievably popular and in demand. I hope you enjoyed this final list video of 2020, and I will see you in the new year with plenty of new content. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications so you know exactly when I post a new video. It's every Thursday if you don't click the bell, so make sure you check back in every Thursday for a brand new video. And also I'm posting this on Christmas Eve, so happy holidays. If you want to get a very, very last minute gift idea that will not make it to you by Christmas, we've still got Cobra Kyle merchandise. I'm wearing the t-shirt right now. They're still on sale from Black Friday because I never changed the pricing back. So get in on the deal. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. And until the next one, stay rowdy within reason.